Welcome RICS CPC candidates. This is Mo, and I'm thrilled to be your guide today when we delve into the essentials of accounting principles and procedures. At APC Mastery Path, we understand the importance of understanding the different areas of competence, whether you're a seasoned professional or you're just starting out. Understanding each and every single area of competence is a key to success. Today, we'll be covering a comprehensive agenda for the accounting principles and procedures. We're gonna be starting with an overview of assets and liabilities, moving to insolvency, jumping to financial statements, then accounts, ratio analysis and more. With APC Mastery Path, you're not just learning theories, but you're gaining practical insights about how to apply theory in your field and strategies to ace your APC assessment. So let's dive in and equip ourselves with the knowledge and skills needed to excel on today's topic. And without further ado, let's get started. Starting with the assets and liabilities. The liabilities are basically the debts that the business or people are not able to pay on time. They could take a form of long-term liabilities such as mortgages, or they can take short-term form such as consumables, rents, car payments, and the likes. The assets are the things that people, businesses own. They could be car fleets, they could be equipment, they could be buildings, they could be technological um, bits and pieces and the assets if you deduct it from them the liabilities that's gonna dictate and explain how much the business is worth or the shareholders equity <music> moving to insolvency insolvency is when businesses or people are not able to really pay the debts agreed to pay on time and then that can take a variety of them stages, starting with administration, where the court takes the management of the firm and then moving to liquidation, where the business, they sell the assets in order to pay the debts. Receivership, where the director's board, they give the right to specific assets to a specific receiver. And then there can be voluntary agreements between the creditors and the business to write off some of them debts and then have a payment plan for the rest of the debts. And then the insolvency has two types, cash flow and balance sheet. The balance sheet insolvency is really concerned with the amount of debts if compared to the current assets. So if the current assets are more than the current liabilities, then the business is solvent. Otherwise, the business is insolvent. The balance sheet, on the, other, on the other hand, is really concerned with the working capital if compared to the debts. There are some terms that are really linked to insolvency that we can discuss together today. The pension, it's a form of guarantee that is provided by the borrower to the lender to make sure that the borrower is going to be paying on time. And that gives the lender a peace of mind. And then what happens if a contractor goes bust? So a QS, they should go on site, understand the value of the works done to date, if the site is insured, if the materials are insured, and if they are of the correct type and size and specs and the likes. Also, there has to be some sort of documentation of the actual work done to date and what is the estimated completion and that's gonna help the client plan. In the unfortunate event of insolvency, there has to be an order of people or businesses or professional bodies to receive the monies from the insolvent party. The first body who is gonna be receiving the monies are gonna be the banks, followed by the liquidator for their fees and expenses, and then the pensions and employees pay, they're gonna be receiving the monies afterwards, followed by the floating charge holders, and last but not the least, it's the turn of the clients. There has to be some red flags that could dictate if a, a person or a business, they are insolvent or they're going to be insolvent in the near future. Some of them red flags could include the overvaluation of the applications for payment. If there's not a lot of people doing the work, if there is a massive decrease in the productivity in producing or finalizing the work as well. And lastly, there can be some gossip 
about the lack of competence of specific professional parties. And that could be a massive red flag. Financial statements, they give an understanding on how healthy a business is from a monetary perspective. There are a number of financial statements that an RICS APC candidate should be wary of. So let's start with the balance sheet, which gives an understanding on the financial stance for a certain organization at a given point in time by listing the assets, the current and the long-term assets, and what are the liabilities, the current and the long-term ones, and then a balance sheet showcases the liabilities when they are deducted from the assets to give the shareholders equity. Profit loss account, that gives understanding on the financial stance over a period of time by listing the sales of the firm, the revenue from these sales, and the cost of the goods sold, operating expenses, taxation, interest, any other liabilities that um, a firm would be obliged to pay, and then understanding how profitable or non-profitable the business is. Cash flow forecast and cash flow. Cash flow allows understanding what are the financial commitments that a business have over a period of time by listing the cash in and cash out in different months. And this allows forecasting what financial commitments a firm would have in the future. The cash flow forecast could be for a specific project or for an organization as a whole. Moving on to some financial statements examples. Let's start with a balance sheet. As you can see on the screen, listing the current assets, long-term assets, short-term liabilities, and long-term liabilities. As you can see, the assets, they are the total at $275,000. The liabilities are the total at $125,000. And when we deduct the liabilities from the assets, that gives owner's equity of $150,000. Another example would be the income statement, as we have explained before listing the costs of goods sold, the revenue from the goods, the gross profits, any expenses, and then at the bottom you would see the profits or loss that a business would achieve. The last example is a cash flow where you would find listing out the expenses or the financial commitments for uh, different areas or pots over a number of months. Moving on to the accounts, there are two types of accounts that an RICS APC candidate should be aware of and should know, the management account and the financial account. The management account is used internally by the management team to track resources, plan for future projects and strategize how the business would tackle projects in the market. The financial account on the other hand, it's used externally with uh, the authorities in order to report the books and ledgers it's also used to advise on the taxation bracket where the business sits. And also, financial accounts could be used for auditing purposes. Risk analysis is quite a prominent terminology under the accounting realm. And there are a number of definitions that an RICS APC candidate is expected to know. First one is the gross profit, which accounts for the revenues from the goods sold, deducted from it, the costs of these goods. It doesn't account for operating expenses, interest payments, taxation, and the likes. The net profit, on the other hand, it accounts for the depreciation and amortization, the actual taxation, interest payments, and operating expenses. The capital expenditure, that's the cash which is invested in assets deployed in the business. Revenue expenditure, that is quite linked to operating expenses, rents, wages, salaries, and the likes. Gearing, that is a comparison between the amount borrowed related to the shareholder's equity or the net worth of the business. And lastly, liquidity, which is how much cash you have readily available, including the assets that could be liquidated to have cash ready. Continuing with the ratio analysis, we're going to highlight in this video four specific ratios starting with the profit margin, where we calculate the gross profit by deducting the costs of goods sold from the overall revenues achieved by the business. And then we calculate a ratio between the gross profit and the overall revenues to understand where the business is sat in terms of gross profit margin. The second ratio is operating profit, where we deduct the operating expenses from the gross profit, taking into account the depreciation and amortization as well. 
The third one is gearing, which is comparing how much you borrow as a firm if compared to the net worth of that firm. And lastly, return on equity, which calculates a ratio between how much the business is achieving in terms of net profit if compared to the net worth of the business. There are some bonus points that we're going to highlight in today's video. The first one is cash farming, which is how much cash tied up in assets and not readily available to be invested elsewhere in the project or in the firm. Financial auditing, it's a form of scrutiny of the financial statements of a specific organization, and that is a requirement by the law. It judges how accurate the financial statements are in representing the reality. The third thing is credit control, which is a mechanism used by financial institutions when they are lending out money to borrowers by calculating the risk profile of each and every single borrower to control how the money is lent and how the money is coming back to the financial institution. Another important point is the parent company guarantee. When a firm is owned by a much larger institution and the smaller firm is working with a specific client, the client can ask the larger firm to provide a guarantee for the performance of the smaller firm. Valuation of the works in the construction industry can take a wide variety of, of forms. It's not going to be fully discussed in this video. I'll make another video for it. But roughly speaking, it's going to be based on a specific activity schedule or based on agreed milestones or in different stages. Taxation is a mechanism by which the government collects money from people and firms in order to spend on health, education and defence. There are a number of them types of, tax, of taxes in different countries. Here in the UK, you could find Value added tax, income tax, corporate tax, stamp duty, and land tax. Stamp duty is for uh, properties. Work in progress is quite important for everybody working in the construction industry, whether they are clients, contractors, or consultants. It gives understanding on how much money is tied up in the business, how much work has actually been done up to date, and this could help with the forecasting of future financial commitments required. And that can lead to some sort of adjustments in the payment schedule. And lastly, construction industry scheme, that is linked to the UK, where main contractors could deduct monies from the subcontractors to pay for the taxation and the national insurances of subcontractors by sending these monies to the HMRC, which is His Majesty Revenue and Customs. And that concludes our overview of this particular area of competence. We hope that you find this video insightful useful and valuable for your preparation for the RICS APC final interview. Remember, this video is a part of a series that is produced by APC Mastery Path. This series is designed specifically to provide concise explanations for different areas of competence, tailored for your success. If you're looking for further resources, guidance and tools to aid you in your RICS APC journey, be sure to visit our website www.apcmasterypath.co.uk There you will find a wealth of information on products tailored specifically to help you excel in your assessment. Thank you for watching and best of luck in your RICS APC journey. Stay tuned for more insightful videos from APC Mastery Path. Until next time, take care. Cheers guys.